Hi again. We are on page 88, numbers 22 through 27. It says, multiply each side of the equation by an appropriate power of 10 to obtain integer coefficients. Then solve the equation. Well, first off, I want to show you guys um, <clears throat> basically the fraction behind each one of these decimals. Um, see this, remember, you were taught that this says 2 tenths. So in other words, this is 2 tenths x squared minus 3 tenths x minus uh, 35 tenths. You can say 3 and 5 tenths, but what that ends up being is 35 tenths equals zero. And again, I'm, I'm going to show you guys that three and five tenths would be essentially three plus five tenths. So this this would be 30 out of 10 plus five out of 10 if I needed to make the common denominator. And that makes 35 out of 10. So I, in essence, I just sort of proved to you that 3.5 is 35 tenths. So um, it looks like 10 is in the denominator everywhere, so that's what I'm going to multiply by. I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. So I'm going to just use a pen here so, so you don't get confused on, on what I'm doing to both sides. Multiply by 10 on the left and 10 on the right. Okay, so if I multiply uh, this 10 by every term over here, that means I'd have to distribute 10 through. Well, the tens are going to cancel everywhere. So this is 2x squared minus 3x minus 35 equals well, 10 times 0 is simply still 0. All right. So now I have a 2 out front, and that bothers me because, uh, because it's harder to factor. So what I'm going to do is see if there is a GCF between the 2, the 3, and the 35, and there is not a greatest common factor. So I need to solve this using the Lizzie method, uh, factor by using the Lizzie method. So, um, so here's where we take the 2 and we multiply by 35. x squared minus 3x minus 70 equals 0. Now I haven't pre-worked this problem, so it's going to take me a minute probably to find my factors of 70 that add up to 3. Factors of 70 to add up to 3. Now, um, here's how I approach these problems. If the number is too big to memorize all of the factors, like I can remember 7 and 10, and, um, and actually that's probably going to work for me. But, um, but what, I was, what I was thinking of was why not just take take that 3. They have to have a difference of 3. So why not just pick something like 6 and 9. Those have a difference of 3, but they only multiply up to 54. And then try 7 and 10. They have a difference of 3, but they multiply up to 70. So this is actually what I'm going to want. Now which one of these numbers should be negative to multiply up to negative 70 and add up to negative 3? Um, that's right, it'd be negative 10 and positive 7 would multiply to give you that, and then they would add to give you negative 3. Multiply up to negative 70, add up to negative 3. So that's how you'd solve this. Um, you have x minus 10, x plus 7 equals 0, and now you take that 2 from the beginning and divide here and here. So x minus 5, remember reduce the fraction. If it doesn't reduce, put the 2 out front in front of the x. Alright, and hopefully you can um, you can finish this problem. I'll Go ahead and show it to you. x minus 5 equals 0. So x equals 5 by adding 5 on each side. 2x plus 7 equals 0. And um, check this out. 
We're going to subtract 7 and divide by 2 in one step. So if I subtract 7, then divide by 2, that's where I am, negative 7 over 2. Okay? Alright, so number 23, I'm probably not going to work. Uh, I'm not going to show you all those fractions again. Um, I'm just going to show you that if you have tenths, then that's what you're going to be multiplying by to get rid of the decimals. So let's get rid of the decimals in this uh, problem by multiplying by 10. Um, it, so I'm just going to start here, I guess. I'm going to start on the top line and just multiply by 10 on both sides of the equation. So take that 10 and distribute it through. It looks like I get 10 r squared plus, you might not know this by heart, um, and if you don't know it by heart, you can look at the calculator, but I urge you to, to start remembering it by heart, I guess. Uh, but if I did 10 times 0 0.6, that's just going to give me 6. All that does is moves the decimal to the right one, uh, one place. 6r minus, move the decimal to the right, 4 equals 10 times 0 is 0. And you'll be learning about decimal conversions like this, multiplying by 10 and 100, you'll be learning that in biology. So, uh, so what we do here is we see that the a value is bigger than 1, um, so it's 10, so is there a greatest common factor in these three terms? And immediately you say yes. 2 goes into everything. So I'm going to divide by 2. Some people will factor here. I'm choosing to divide because I have an equation. And that's okay. If you only had an expression, uh, your only choice would be to factor. But I have a choice. I can either factor the 2 out or I can divide by two on both sides of the equation. That's what I choose to do most of the time. So now I have 5r squared plus 3r minus 2. Notice that when you divide by 2, every term gets divided by 2. Okay? And 0 divided by 2 is 0. So now, is there another greatest common factor? Well, no. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to do the Lizzie method again. Okay? Hopefully we've run through enough Lizzie method examples, um, but I I'm going to talk you through this each time. What you do is you take the 5, multiply it by the negative 2. So we have r squared plus 3r minus 10 equals 0. So now you're going to factor this like normal. What multiplies up to negative 10 and adds up to 3. You're thinking 5 and 2. Which one of those is positive? positive 5 because I have a positive here. So positive 5, negative 2. I'm going to take my work. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. x plus 5. x minus 2 equals 0. Now remember that that wasn't the original question. The original one has a 5 out front. So since I already multiplied by 5, I need to divide by 5 out here. And this gives me x plus 1 times 5x minus 2 equals 0. And now that gives me x plus 1 equals 0. So subtract 1 on both sides. x equals negative 1. And then I have 5x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 on both sides. So 5x equals 2. Then divide by 5 on both sides. And x equals 2 fifths. Now, in the previous question, I did not walk through all those three steps. But I expect that maybe you are walking through those three steps here. Um, in number 23, I did show you how I'm adding to and then I'm dividing by 5. Okay, so I solved numbers number 22 and 23 the, pretty much the exact same way. Alright, so now